My boyfriend kicked me out of his car at one in the morning and left me there. Should I break up with him? His boyfriend and I went to a party and got into a huge fight. Here's a little backstory on our situation. This boy chased me for months. And let me just say he was never my type. I did not find him attractive. I didn't even think he was funny. Friends introduced us and after he met me, he was completely obsessed. I knew and everybody knew that I was way out of his league, but he just started doing really sweet things. For example, he'd show up to my job with the Starbucks. First, I thought it was creepy that he would show up to my job. Then I found out he worked two blocks away from me, so it was actually pretty sweet. He would invite all of us friends to his place, and then he'd have a special dinner for me because I have celiacs, so I can only eat gluten-free and he would only make me gluten-free food. After him trying to ask me out for three months, I finally caved in and said yes. This is where it gets me angry. Like, this is a boy that I had zero interest in, yet I fell in love and became obsessed, and now I'm the one suffering? How is this fair? Six months into the relationship everything was pretty much okay until he started getting jealous of everybody even our existing friends we went to this party and my best friend introduced me to her new boyfriend and i actually know her boyfriend from years ago so he and i were talking but my boyfriend got angry grabbed me by the arm and dragged me out of the party we got in the car and we argued for an hour we were an hour from my home because we were fighting in the car i asked him why he was so jealous and he said that he couldn't stand people even looking at me I told him that reaction was unreasonable and not normal and when i said the word normal he got so angry he stopped the car opened my door and pulled me out out. He pulled me out so quickly I fell onto the floor and he just drove away. Mind you, I'm one hour away from my house. It is literally one in the morning. And my battery was on 2%. Quickly grab my phone and call my best friend who's still at the party. She answers and I said to her, he kicked me out of the car, come pick me up, I'm sending you my location, and I hung up. I sent her my location, 30 seconds later my phone dies. At this point, I have no idea if anybody's coming for me. This man drove by and stopped and asked me if I needed a ride, but honestly he terrified me. He had a beer bottle in his lap, and he laughed when he saw me. He said, are you lost? I told him I was waiting for friends, and then he laughed even harder. He said, I'll just wait here with you, but I told him if he didn't mind to please leave me alone. That's when he called me a bitch and drove away. Also, I'm standing in the middle of a road with barely any lights, so it's like super dark. Every little noise I heard was scaring the life out of me. Picture me. I'm there clutching my purse and my phone, making 360 turns just to make sure nobody's coming up behind me. And finally, my best friend shows up. She is angry. She said to me, you're breaking up with him. I don't care what he says. She drove me home and the next morning, my boyfriend shows up. And guess what? He's acting like nothing happened. When I open the door and he walks in, I say, do you remember what you did? And all he said was, yeah, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it? This man kicked me out of his car at 1 in the morning, knowing my battery was on 2%, putting my life in danger. And he wants to talk about it? I required all the patience that Virgin Mary could give me. That's when he apologized and said that he was completely out of line. And I said, you think? And then, of course, I started to cry and I told him everything that happened after he kicked me out of the car. And he started crying. And he said, I'm so sorry, I didn't even think about that. I also made him call my best friend to apologize to her as well, which he did, and my best friend did not accept the apology and she hung up on him. Then I told him he didn't even call me later on that night to see if I got home okay. Really, was he that angry that he just did not care about what happened to me? But here's the problem. I'm still so in love and obsessed. But my best friend and I agreed that I would not get back with him. I told him I couldn't accept him back into my life because clearly he doesn't care enough and he doesn't have my back. Then he started to cry some more and left. He's been showing up to my house every day with flowers and everything that I like. But I'm confused, angry, and I just really don't know what to do. Am I overreacting or am I not reacting enough? Should I just cut contact with him? Growing up evangelical means that you assume you are going to marry anyone you meet that's of the opposite gender, of the same religion, and even moderately attractive. When I was 16, I started taking classes at the community college, and you can bet my ass was on the prowl, on the hunt, for a good Christian man in the university setting. My first day of my first advanced creative writing workshop, I saw this guy in my class who had a he is greater than I t-shirt on, and if you don't know what a he is greater than I t-shirt is, it's basically like the bat symbol for Christian. And I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna marry him, I'm gonna marry him, obviously. So I went onto the class roster, I found the list of all the first and last names of all of the people and I looked up each person until I found this guy's Instagram and I found out he went to a church that a bunch of my friends went to and I was like oh my god I can totally follow him right now and make it seem like we just have mutual friends and he was like a suggested person for me to follow you know and then he messaged me and was like oh my god I saw you in class today and I'm so excited to know that you're a Christian and I was like oh my god I like your t-shirt and he's like do you want to get coffee before class next week and share our testimonies with each other because that is the ideal Christian first date. And I was like, this is literally the sexiest thing anybody has ever said to me in my life. So we meet at the coffee place, at the same coffee place that Morgan Drinks Coffee worked at when they got famous on TikTok, and they were like there all the time when we were on these coffee dates. So he starts asking me about my testimony, and I'm like, fuck, I need to think of something like really dark and heavy because people always have dark, heavy stuff in their testimonies. But I had like two lives at this point. I was closeted and queer and had a very 
active role on gay Tumblr, but also was trying to keep that an enormous secret from everybody in my life and was also performing as like the most Christian Christian who ever Christian. So I like pulled something out of my ass about how I had like been drinking in high school even though I literally was still in high school. And that was like my rock bottom moment was like the first time I had alcohol when I was a minor and just realized that I had gone down like such a dark path. And he was like, oh my God, thank you so much for sharing that with me. Let me share with you my testimony. And he goes on to share about how he used to be Jewish. And then he met a girl who was Christian and he had a huge crush on her. So he decided to start going to Christian church for her and now hates Jewish people. And I was like, that doesn't sound right. Like, you had me going up to a point, and I feel like we have veered off into some very dangerous territory here. But I was also 16, and he was, like, three years older than me, so I thought he hung the moon and had, like, the ultimate authority on everything, so I just went with it. And then he started asking me if I was a long-earth Christian or a short-earth Christian, which, like, if you don't know what that is, it's basically, do you believe that God actually made the earth in six days? Or do you think it took like six metaphorical days? And I'd be like, who would we be to question the text or God's capabilities? Of course, it took six days, just like regular days. And he was like, you are so smart. So then I started signing up for like literally every single volunteer thing that he signed up for so that we could spend more time together. And then I would like leave my phone charger in class and then ask for it like half a week later. So I would have to see him. One time he and his friend invited me over to like their church office building to just sit on a beanbag and listen to Christian music. And then the term ended and we kept talking and hanging out and stuff. And then one day he just vanished off the face of the planet, like stopped talking to me completely out of nowhere. I was devastated devastated like i had told all of my friends that i was going to marry this person because i was so obsessed with him three weeks after he ghosts he posts engagement photos with a girl that he went to church with i was distraught distraught i felt so betrayed so betrayed i made it my personal mission never to forgive this person and then a year later i was living in a house with a cult and every year this cult house put on this big thanksgiving banquet and imagine my surprise when i walk down to the dining room of this place where i live and see this man there with his wife i like saw her from across the room like oh my god and of course he makes eye contact with me and is like oh my god and calls me over to introduce me to his wife and she's like oh my god how do you guys know each other and he's like oh we knew each other previously those were his exact words like what the fuck does that mean and i was like yeah okay i have to go and then i grabbed a single piece of turkey just like with a fork <laughs> then left the room and just ate my piece of turkey with like a fork in another room without a plate because i was like i can't be in there am i in the wrong for leaving my friend in london on her 18th birthday oh you all jumped down my throats in the comments listen to the story first let's flash back to Three years ago, a friend was arranging her 18th birthday with me, herself, and about four other girls. We planned a meal out in London, the steakhouse, bougie as fuck. We we're also planning a night out afterwards. Now, I don't go out, so I said I'm going to go home after the meal. My friend and the rest of her friends were planning on getting a hotel in London for their night out. Because I knew I was going to go out after the guy that I was seeing at the time, he offered to pick me up from London to then take me back home. Because I had arranged what I was doing, I thought I was Kushta. I thought, yeah, it's going to be great. Just going to go out for a lovely meal. Go home. Chill. Beautiful evening. No. No, 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 no. So the day of my friend's 18th birthday, I received a message of some of her friends saying that they weren't going. So it was only going to be like three of us that were going out for this meal and a supposed night out. I feel quite bad for her because she did have this planned out for like a couple of weeks. And then 10 minutes before we leave, because me and my friend were getting the train to meet her other friend in London, she FaceTimed me and said, I think I'm just going to get a lift home. And I was like, oh, okay, no worries, yeah. Then she kept repeating herself. Oh, I might just get a lift home. I might just get a lift home. I might just get a lift home. Look, whatever you're insinuating, ask. Just ask me, but she never did. I assumed that she was going to get a lift with someone else. Because she never asked me. Let's clear that up. Second of all, I know for a fact that the guy that I was seeing at the time would have not drove to London by himself to pick me up, so I knew his car would have been full. Get on with the story, Grace. Anyway, so me and my friend went to the train station and we had a coach replacement, so we got on the coach. Everything was fine. She just kept mentioning that she wasn't sure whether she wanted to go out anymore, all of this stuff, and I was like, oh, go for it, girl. You know, it's your 18th, have fun, go wild. 
She was like, oh, I don't know. I might just get a left tie. Okay. Once we got to London, we had to get an Uber to a friend's house that lived in London. So there was only three of us going out. I actually think this was my friend's first or second time actually meeting this other girl. So I was like, okay. I really, I, I don't know her, I'm awkward as fuck. We get to this girl's house and the vibe is fucking weird. Obviously I've never met her. I don't think they've, these two have even met properly. It's just all a bit off. And it was only them two talking to each other. No one was talking to me. So I felt incredibly awkward. And at that point I knew I wanted to go home. The vibe is obviously stinky as hell. So we head to the restaurant. But the car ride was better because obviously you can choose your music. So we're all vibing to each other's music, which is quite cool. We were actually kind of getting along, which I was like more at ease with. We get to the restaurant and we're obviously sat down. We get our drinks and my friend and the other girl say, oh, we're just going to go to the toilet. I thought, well, I don't even need the toilet. So I'll just, I'll just stay here, mate. What usually is a 10 minute break. I would have thought going to the toilet. Girls chit chat, 10 minutes. 30 minutes, I was sat there by myself with my little cocktail all alone on a massive table for three. Aimlessly looking around waiting for someone to talk to me. Because I felt how stinky the vibe was. Girls, you know that feeling of when you just know you don't belong somewhere. You're not wanted. I just messaged the guy that was seeing. I said, can you leave now? Because it takes an hour and a half to two hours to get to London. I, they get back to the table and they're like, oh, we're so sorry. We we're just like taking, we're just taking photos. But I didn't want any. Thanks for asking. If I knew you were going to take photos, I would have came. But whatever, fuckers. So some time passes and we order our food. And yet again, Grace isn't talking to anyone because no one's talking to her. One of them situations where you can't actually think of anything to say because you're that awkward and anxious that nothing's coming out it's like i've been mute so i feel unbearably awkward just sat at the end and them two are just like nagging away to each other and i'm like oh i want to go home food turns up and i thought oh we're all gonna be quiet now because we're all gonna be eating our food no they're both still nattering away ignoring me they're like meow, 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 and i'm just sat there like So I then turn around and just say, oh, by the way, I am leaving soon. The said person is on their way now. My friend turns around and says, I thought I was coming with you. I said, excuse me, you never asked, but you were staying in a hotel. I thought you'd plan to go out with the other friend. No, you said you were going to get a lift, but you didn't, you didn't ask. I thought it was going to be with someone else. This is the moment where it went completely silent for about... 10 seconds straight. So awkward. I wanted to die inside. They were both looking at me like. I just turned around and said, well, I assumed that I, it would have been okay coming with you. I said, well, you assumed wrong. Ask. Don't do the whole, oh, I might get a lift home. Ask me. I look like a twat. Her friend starts piping up saying how disrespectful I am as a friend and that I'm not a real friend because I've just left her. So I haven't just left her. I thought she'd planned something else. If she was getting a lift home, I thought she planned that. If not, she was staying at a hotel. I just said, why don't she just stay at yours for the night? I don't understand. If you had originally planned a night out and you were staying in London, why is it all of a sudden a change? Because I've already organised myself that I was already going home. Why is it now my problem? Because I've already arranged myself. If you want to change your plans, that's on you. I called up the guy that I was seeing to ask if he had any space in his car. He turns around and said, no, Grace, my car is full. Can't take anyone else. I relayed back the information and it went down like a fucking shit storm. I tell you my friend and her, and her other friend were absolutely raging at me, fuming. They didn't talk to me. Anything they said was fucking rude and blunt. And I was like, this isn't my problem. How are you not understanding that this was never my issue in the first place and now you've made it my problem? It's not my car. I can't just dictate what happens. The other girl was like, we're waiting until he shows up. We're waiting until he shows up to see if he actually has a full car. We'll go for it then. What a fucking weird thing to do. We're waiting. We're waiting. We're going to see if he's telling the truth. Fuck off. Actually, fuck off. But the bill arrives and I pay for myself and my friend because it's her 18th. Of course, I'm going to pay for her. The other friend didn't even offer. Mind, because she was so annoyed at me, I didn't even get a thank you. After the bill was paid, I was so annoyed that I'd been spoken to with such disrespect. I decided to stand outside instead and just wait for the guy that I was seeing to turn up. I'm waiting outside, an Uber turns up, and they both walk out of the restaurant and get in the Uber. Oh, bye to you too. Disrespect. There's an odd Uber and fucked off. And behind my back, 
what the fuck? I got left on my own in the streets of London at 2 a.m. by myself for 45 minutes. Scared little girl. I'm crying, I'm crying. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm by myself. What am I gonna do? The person that I'm seeing turns up and then everything's fine. I'm not crying anymore. Everything's handy dandy. My friend's gone back to her other friend's house in London. Everything's chilled. I don't need to worry. They're fucked off at me, but it is what it is at the end of the day. Moving on to the following day. I get a little message. Hi, Grace. I had to get an Uber home last night. It cost me 400 pound. You owe me 200 pound to split the cost. What the fuck for? I paid, I paid for your dinner on your birthday. Why am I paying 200 pounds for your Uber that you chose to get? Fuck me. It was painful. It was a painful thing to, to communicate. Did I pay the 200 pounds? Absolutely not. Have I ever spoken to her again? Absolutely not. Did I get called a skank? Yes, I did. Let me know if you think I'm in the wrong. I wasn't, so I don't need to hear your comments because I wasn't in the wrong. In future, plan for yourself, not others. Someone says they've got an, a different plan. That's on them. It's not then your responsibility. That would be all. Every month a parade passes through my town and we're not allowed to look at it. I've lived in Arizona the past 15 years of my life, but I used to live in a small town in the middle of nowhere. I couldn't even tell you what side of the country it's on or if it's even in the United States. The only thing I know for certain is the name of the town, Point Pine. I lived in Point Pine for the first 10 years of my life, but after my 10th birthday, we moved out of the town and my parents never spoke of it again. They were trying to forget about that town and I didn't blame them. Since moving out of that town, Point Pine has not been mentioned again. Well, until now when I'm telling you about it. I wanna preface this with saying that when I lived there, all of these things seemed totally normal as residents. But now now looking back, it's kind of scary. One peculiar thing was the Point Pine Bakery. Whenever you went there, Mr. Terrence, the owner, already knew what you were going to order. There was a rumor spread by the kids around town that he was a magician that could read your mind. Also, whenever you paid for your baked goods, you had to tip him in clothing, usually being something that you grew out of. There was an old box up by the register filled with old baby clothes and shoes. That was one of the weird things, but it's not odd at all compared to the other things. Every year on your birthday, you had to get blood work done. To this day, I still don't know what the point of that was. Another weird rule was everyone had to be up at 8.13 a.m. There were even speakers for an alarm that would go off at 8.13 a.m. all over town, like some kind of amusement park. When those alarms went off, parents would wake their children as fast as possible as if it was like a fire or something. But certainly one of the weirdest things that happened in Point Pine was the Point Pine Monthly Parade. It happened every month without fail, and it was never on the same date. Each month, a student from Pine Point was chosen to be in the parade. The weird thing about this parade is that we weren't allowed to watch it go by. Not on the streets, not from the windows, and not even on television. We always knew when the parade was about to start because it always started the exact same way. You would hear a chorus of voices, like a church choir. The melody wasn't familiar to me. It sounded like it could be a nursery rhyme or something similar to that. Once you heard the first note, you had five minutes to get inside. Well, one year around 4th of July, me and my friend Lee decided we were going to break the rules and watch the parade. Which now that I think about it, I'm surprised more kids didn't try to do this because when you tell a kid not to do something, obviously they're gonna do it. But we didn't know where it was gonna be, when it was gonna start, or the path it was gonna take around town. So we had to just wait. Around the third week of the month, we heard the chorus start. Me and Lee looked at each other and darted off into the trees. Everyone else near us raced to the nearest building. This year, my sister's friend Reed was chosen to work the parade. We were crouching in the bushes when we heard the chorus of voices get louder and louder, and then Lee said, Dude, I see it. We tried to straighten up to see what he was seeing, but I was always a short kid and I couldn't see over the brush. Then Lee said, oh no, and covered his head and ducked down, hiding from that. I yelled to Lee, I can't see anything. Then Lee goes, shh, they might see us. I froze with fear and I stopped moving until they were about to pass right in front of us. Then Lee dove to the ground. Lee screams, oh no, and gets in a cradle-like position. Then he covers his head with his hands. I looked at Lee and asked, what? I saw her, I saw that girl, he yelled. That's when I realized he was talking about Reed. I tried to get up to see, but Lee pulled me down to the ground. Then he looked at me and he said, you don't wanna see it. 
I think this was the first time in all the years I've known Lee that he looked genuinely terrified. I turned my back on the parade and looked at Lee. I'd had enough. I asked him, what did you see? He looked at me and said those things. They're eating her. But she doesn't even care. When Lee told me this, he started crying. At this point, part of me didn't even want to see what was going on with the parade. That's when I heard the singing get louder. They were coming towards us. I shut my eyes, but the voices continued for a few more minutes. At one point, Lee started wailing. I kept my eyes shut the entire time. After that, it continued along and made its way through town. Once we started to hear everyone get out of their hiding spaces, I leaned down to help Lee get up. But when he stood up, he kept his head down. Lee, what's wrong? I asked. I could hear him sniffling. So I asked him again, Lee? He finally responded as he lifted his head. It took my eyes. I will never forget that moment when he looked up at me with no eyes. The day after that, me and my family moved out of Point Pine. I never knew what became of Lee after that day. Just minutes after we left, my parents started to act like Point Pine never existed. And as far as I know, Lee was the only person to ever see Captain that for me. Things my ex did to me and I still stayed. This could be about one ex or multiple. Um, you take your pick. Let's just get right into it. Tried to choke me in a corner while drunk and no, not in a fun way. Really shouldn't be laughing because it's not funny, but like at this point, it's how I cope. Number two, wrote a girl's phone number in his notes app while he was out at a bar. And yes, I did find this in his notes um, the next day. Figured out what area code that girl's phone number was and figured out who the girl was. <laughs> Forced me to buy a gym membership because he would tell me that I'm fat. And here's the bonus to this one. He would force me to go with him multiple times a week. Not to mention, this gym membership was not cheap. Um, I did not want to be spending my money on it. He would force me to send him pictures of every single thing that I ate to make sure that I wasn't eating too much. <laughs> and if I was, he would make me uh, go to the gym that day if I hadn't. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Would constantly tell his roommates that he wants to hook up with his math teacher, like the assistant one. And typically the assistant teachers were like our age, so that just made it so weird. I mean, regardless, it's weird, but yeah, I would have to um know that every single time he would go to that class every week that he would uh, be thinking about hooking up with her, so awesome. But shout out to his roommates for letting me know this. Um, that's how I found out a lot of this, so um, this makes it even funnier. Next one might be the best one. He invited a girl over while I was already in his bed sleeping for the night. Like, fully, I was already asleep for the whole entire night. We were sleeping at his house, and he invited a girl over, and they hung out downstairs, like, one floor below where I was sleeping, and not only did he invite one girl, he invited their whole friend group. He was hanging out with the whole friend group. This was a girl he used to talk to as well. Thought I'd mention that. Yup, just sound asleep in my boyfriend's bed and there he was one floor below inviting girls over that he used to talk to awesome and i did find this out through his text messages on his phone when the girl literally said almost there <laughs> and i got confirmation from the roommates so again shout out to the roommates he would facetime girls behind my back and then delete it off of his phone but then i'd find it on his computer the next morning again these are girls that he did used to talk to so that makes it even better right <laughs> If we ever were having an argument in the car, he would force me to get out of the car and then literally leave me there, even if it was in the middle of nowhere and I had no way to get back. Sometimes he would come back for me, but if he did, he would just call me a bitch the whole entire car ride home or just multiple um, names that I cannot say on here. But I mean, like, at least he picked me up. Uh, in my head, I was like, oh, he's so sweet. Like, he came back for me. That was so nice of him. And I'm not even kidding. Like, literally, that went through my head. I was supposed to pick him up from the bar this one night, but he wasn't answering me, which kind of made me nervous. And the bar was already closed, so I drove all the way there to see what was going on and found him on the sidewalk uh, walking home with a girl. So I pulled over and said, guys, get in. I'll drive you home. And yes, I uh, drove her home. And I stayed with him. I mean, I had to talk with him the next morning, but I stayed with him. Yeah. Fun fact, this was the exact same girl whose phone number he wrote in his notes where I figured out the area code, so that was even more fun for me. I was like, oh, all the pieces are coming together. So fun. And yes, you guessed it. He did the same exact thing with the same exact girl uh, the weekend after. I did still stay, even though he did it for a second time. Two weekends in a row. This one night, we were in like a really bad fight, so he invited a girl over five minutes after I left, and I only know this because his roommates told me the next day. So, isn't that so fun? Gosh, all these are so fun. Isn't this just awesome? This next one is really fun. I'm a girl in my sorority who wasn't that close with called me and she said hey i saw your boyfriend um dancing and like um doing other things with this girl at a bar last night i just want to make sure that you guys are still dating i was like uh what i said yep uh we are still dating thank you for letting me know here's another good one that i actually found out myself from looking through his phone he went up to a girl at a bar and told her that he wishes they never stopped talking <laughs> 
And I found this out because there was a text message from her on his phone that said, did you really mean everything you said last night? <laughs> what did he say? What the hell did he say? Awesome. So game days at Alabama are like a really big deal, but he decided last minute that he did not want me a part of his plans anymore. But it was too late to go with my friends instead because they were already at the game and I didn't have a ticket because I was planning to hang out with him, which he just uh, removed me from his plans, so. So I spent my game day going to a place called Chicken Salad Chick all by myself and I ate inside there alone. Yep, all alone, eating lunch by myself, and no, he did not care or feel bad, but I did meet up with my friends later, so. This next one I found out about after we broke up, but I had to include it. He was out at the bar with his friends and saw a girl that he used to talk to. This girl did not like him. Like, she had him blocked on everything, like, every social media. But, apparently, seeing her at the bar made him miss her, so guess what he did? Later in the night, he walked to her apartment, knocked on her door, and begged if she would talk to him. Basically, he begged her to unblock him on everything, and she said, no, please get out of my apartment, but apparently it took forever for him to leave. So, uh... Yeah, and we were fully dating, and I had no idea until after we broke up, so. Awesome. A lot of the times his friends would yell at him to stop calling me names and yelling at me like the way he did, but he would just ignore them and keep doing it, so. Okay, last one, best one. <laughs> I don't know if I can say this one. So he would, <laughs> he would force me to wake up at 4 a.m. to go stand outside of Target with him <laughs> because he always wanted these sports cards, but it was like limited to one per person. He would force me to go with him so he could get more packs of the cards. <laughs> And if I didn't go with him, he would like try and break up with me. So I'd go every single time because I was scared that he was going to do that. So I just did everything that I thought would please him, which is so sad. So sad. So for all my girlies, if you're in a relationship that is similar to any of the things that I said, um, that is not normal behavior and do not stay because I wish I didn't. I am so glad that I finally got out of that. And um, yeah, just please make sure you're safe and um, don't stay. I have had multiple boyfriends in high school and in college too. So these stories could have been about any of them. I my fiance confessed that he's ashamed of my poor family. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It was said to me on Instagram. I grew up really poor, but my family has come up in life. My father opened up his own business and my mom and him run it. Although it's not a huge lucrative business, it's still comfortable enough for my siblings and I to be happy. Because of the way that I grew up, I knew that I wanted to marry a rich man. And he had to be rich. I had five serious relationships before I turned 25. I broke up with each guy because I knew that they weren't going to be able to give me the life I wanted. There's two things I know. I did not want to get to 27 and not be married. So I knew I had to act quickly. Started hanging out where I knew rich people would hang out. This is where I met my bestie. This girl had my back. If she was going to Paris, she'd take me to Paris. And she would pay for everything. My parents neglected her and my family basically took her in. So she would come to my parents' house once or twice a week to have dinner. A few weeks later, she introduced me to my now fiance. And she hated him. He told me to stay away from him, but I couldn't listen. See, he's hot, plus he has money. And he targeted me. The first night he met me, he could not stop looking at me. We hung out every day for a week and after that, he asked me to be his girlfriend. Of course, I said yes. A few months later, I moved in with him my family approved his family loved me too sometimes he would comment on my family's house to the way that they dress my parents came over to his parents for dinner he told my dad in passing that it looked like he didn't have enough time to get ready my dad was wearing a button-up shirt he and i got into a huge fight that night and that's when he confessed that he was embarrassed by my family that's when my boyfriend's parents asked me to forgive him he said they were ashamed of his behavior i forgave him and once i did he proposed he told me he wanted me to be a stay-at-home wife that was my dream all i wanted was to have kids and raise them at home parents were happy about the engagement and so were his as we started planning the wedding he started saying things like i hope your parents aren't going to wear what they usually wear the wedding and he insisted that my dad needed to buy a three thousand dollar suit otherwise he wouldn't look expensive enough and that's verbatim we got into another huge fight he showed up to my house with a mercedes apologizing i'm not sure what to do should i even marry him i know my life with him will be complete luxury what should i do when my girlfriend and i get into a fight she pees on the floor so a throwaway account for obvious reasons. But a couple of months ago, I, male 24, met this really incredible girl, female 22, and we hit it off. We shared a lot of common interests and spent pretty much every waking moment together. She had this really weird obsession with being a cat girl, but I thought it was kind of hot, so I didn't really care too much. Even though it was pretty early into our relationship, we decided to move in together. And it was pretty good for the first couple of weeks. But then things started getting weird. I'm not going to beat around the bush. And I need you to understand that I'm being 100% serious. She started pissing on the carpet when she's frustrated with me. She says it's a part of her kinship or something. But when we have an argument, she'll just squat and piss somewhere in the apartment. I don't know what to do. I'm losing my mind and my entire apartment smells like urine. I do genuinely enjoy her company, but this is getting out of hand. I need help, please. Oh. 